All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shai. By Hashem, Rakakodash. Double honor to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone for teaching us His truth to rule well. Uh, I'm going to be going into Ezekiel 37. You know, just briefly, Lord willing, to the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. This is edifying. Um, but first, let me play this video, man, because. <laughs> You know, Christianity believes that the fulfillment of Ezekiel 37 already happened and is still going to happen, right? Because the Jews, so-called Jews, all right, they call themselves Jewish, all right, over there in Israel, they call themselves Jews or Jewish, right? Which they were Jewish because it's predominantly uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, right? Under the kingdom of Judah, and that's why that by word Jews came about, you know, which which is talking about the southern kingdom of Israel. And then the Israelites or, or Israel or Jerusalem was the northern kingdom, you know. So Jews is really a byword, you know, that's used to describe Judah, Benjamin and Levi, which are three of the 12 tribes, you know. So those Israelites or those Israelis out there in Israel right now. All right, calling themselves Jewish and call themselves fulfilling prophecy. All right, and the proof that they bring out is Ezekiel 37. All right, but it's not true. Why? Because Ezekiel 37 has not been fulfilled yet. It's being fulfilled, right? It's happening right now. You know, it's happening right now. And, and the way we tell is, is by scripture, you know, simply by scripture, man. It's not by, well, I feel like this is fulfilling this when it's not even a complete fulfillment, right? So let's go into it. This is Ezekiel 37 and 1. The hand of Yahweh was upon me, all right? And that, that's, that's one of the first things that you notice that the Israelis, all right, the Jewish out there in Israel, they don't call on the name of Yahweh or on the name of Yahweh Shai. They don't call on the name of the Messiah, right? They, they say uh, Hashem They say that's the name of the Most High Hashem Which Sham means name in the Hebrew And Ha means the Right So they say the name of the Most High Is literally the name You know Which is not <laughs> Obviously Right That's not the name of the Most High Because when you go into the Hebrew Which is another thing they say that that language that was given to them is the true Hebrew, you know, it, it's the true Hebrew and that's what they believe, you know, when it was brought forth by a man, I forgot his name, but he's the one that started teaching, you know, his, his form of Hebrew and then from them, uh, it sprung out to different families that they started teaching that form of Hebrew, you know, which is known as Yiddish. And then from the Yiddish, they supposedly found the true Hebrew, which is what they have today, you know, but it's not entirely true. You see, it's not the true Hebrew because true Hebrew didn't have those. Uh, I forgot what that dot, uh, what those dot is, is, is dot something, you know, but it's, it's basically how you have accents in Spanish or in in french you know you have the uh how, how you pronounce things you know the announce enunciation of, of the word and that's what those dots stand for you know to to announce the words the the vowels you know so it goes into all that but that's what they adopted from different languages you know from the french from the german you know so they created the hebrew following after the Aramaic which the Aramaic is a is a dialogue of Hebrew all right or a dialect Salakia a dialect of Hebrew and by the way Salakia means uh, Salak means sorry and that word ya Salak ya makes it uh, a personal so it would be I'm sorry you know um, but that, that's how we, we go into the Hebrew, go into the, the suffix and the prefix, you know, 
and that's how we're able to learn certain things and and describe certain things right like yahweh is the name of the most high which yah means he all right in the in the as a suffix yah is he as a prefix yah means uh the or, or yah means personal you know so yah means he hawa in the hebrew means exists or is to be you know so yahawa or yahawa means he exists and he is to be you know so that that's the name of the most high it means he exists you know he is to be i am that i am right that's what the, the most high's name is you know so that's how we learn certain things and then we go into the tribe of judah all right which in the hebrew is yahudi you know yahudi which makes no sense because how is the name of the most high included in yahudi you know because when you say when you say uh thank you in the in the hebrew it's yada right yada and the name of the most high is yahweh well how do you say the tribe of of judah in the hebrew that we speak which is the paleo hebrew the lashawan kodash all right which is the ancient hebrew which is the holy tongue it's what it translates to you know but the way that you would say judah is yahawada right yada is thank you yahweh is the name of the most high so yahawada means yahweh thank you right and when you go into the book of uh genesis when it names uh judah all right when judah is brought up is because the mother the mother of judah had said uh i'm gonna bear a child now will i think uh thank the most high you know but it, for the most high it says the lord which is yahweh now will i thank yahweh which means what yahweh duh right so it makes perfect sense when we go into the hebrew same thing with levi which is laya and levi was known as basically the lawyers all right of the 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 laws right they were the ones that enforced the laws so they were the lawyers and the way that you would say is laya right which makes perfect sense you know so there's certain things that we go into the hebrew that we know you know that's another reason why we know that those people in israel right now you know for the majority because we have israelites scattered throughout the four corners of the earth you know but the majority of of the israelis are not true biblical hebrew israelites you know some of our people are over there all right but it's not all of them you know it's mainly amalek which is of the tribe of edom you know it's one of the tribes of edom so they're edomites all right but it says ezekiel 37 and 1 the hand of yahweh was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of yahweh and sat me down and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones right that's the the shadow of death you know that shadow of death is a representation of of let me see if i can get it is a representation of babylon the great you know and there was one that the apostle uh apostle gabar had brought out and it said um oh daughter of babylon but it was talking about edom you know and talked about edom and his wickedness and then it said oh daughter of edom i wrote it down somewhere you know because that that one's that one's so important man but it said oh daughter of edom or, or oh daughter of babylon which is talking about edom so that goes to show that esau edom all right, is going to be in rulership of that mystery Babylon, you know. So it says, uh, Job ten twenty two is good, but there's one I think it was in Isaiah, if I'm not mistaken. The people walked in darkness, have seen a great light that dwell in the land of the shadow of death. I believe it's this one. Isaiah 9, and let me start off at verse 1. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, 
when the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath light shined. All right, and that's us right now. This light, this truth, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, the Hebrew, everything that we go into, that's the light that has sh uh, uh, shined upon us, right? That's the, the, the armor of light like scriptures talk about, which is this truth, you know? So that's uh, shined upon us in the, in the shadow of death, right? In the valley of death, shadow of death, which is Babylon the Great, you know? So going back to Ezekiel 37 and 1, the hand of Yahweh was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of Yahweh and sat me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. It says, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry, you know, and that's how you see these Israelites, these so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans and descendants of them. They're very dry. You know, all they care about is this, you know, wicked holidays, so-called holidays. You know, that's all they care about. They care about making money. You know, they care about themselves. They care about their bellies. You know, they care about things of the world, man. You don't see any of them sacrificing day to day, you know, their their daily needs or, or even needs that the flesh has. You don't see them sacrificing that for the sake of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, you know, to, to, to study, to read, to watch a video, you know, even one video, man, you know, that, that breaks down scripture correctly. You don't see them doing that. You don't see them praying. You don't see them caring, right? Oh, they're, they'll, they'll pretend to pray. And then right after they're done doing that, they go back into the world and, and commit all kinds of, of wickedness, man. They don't care if, if your woman is married, you know, they, they don't care about any of that shit, man. You know, and I, I've seen it myself first and foremost or, or first handed, I should say, you know, there'll be this dude. He's like, damn, that, that girl's fine. And, and she looked good and this, this and that. And I'm like, you know, you know, she's married, right? She had a ring on her finger, you know, or she walked in with her dude hugging and kissing. You shouldn't be looking at that. Nah, but what if nah, but this you know that that that's just how it is, man. That's how it is in this world. You know, you have people not not giving a damn about you, man. And you have that uh, that famous act, uh, uh, singer, what's his name, uh, The Weeknd, right? In one of his songs, he says, "If if you ain't my homeboy, then your girl is singer single to me." And that's the type of vibration they push out in this world, man. And that's Jake, you know, in a dead state of mind, man. Because she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth right so let's get that one she that that liveth in pleasures in pleasure first corinthians 5 and 6 but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth you know and these things give in charge that may be uh, that that they may be blameless, you know. So when Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai comes back, you're not going to have anything, any type of pr uh, protection, you know, if you're one of those two thirds not doing what you're supposed to do. Right. You're just out there being wicked, taking women that are already married and you women out there, man, that, that, that are going after uh, men, even though you are married. Or you're with somebody, all right? Because really, when you when you lay down with a man, all right, which means to have sex, when you have sex with a man, you're you're married, in the eyes of the Most High, you know. And if you go after another man after that, then you're committing whoredom. You know, you're playing the harlot, as Scripture says. You see. So she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth, you know. That, that includes men, all right, nations. And that's what Esau Edom is doing right now, living in pleasure. So Esau Edom, is, his nation is dead while it's living. 
you know, and the people that follow after him in his ways, because he rules the world. So all these nations follow after him, his democracy, his, his ways of life, his westernized way of thinking. You know, you don't have to follow tradition no more. You can do whatever you want. That's what Babylon the Great America portrays. You know, this, this country is freedom. You come here and you do whatever you want. You can be a truck if you want to be a truck. Identify yourself as a fucking trash can. You know, a bunch of wickedness is going on, man. And people out there are not, not realizing how stupid they sound. But when your Habashim Yahweh comes back, they're going to know that those men that were out there in the highways and byways, that those men that were breaking down scriptures, those men that were, were telling them not to do this, not to do that, it's going to come back to their mind and realize, damn, man, why, why didn't I just listen? Right? So Ezekiel 37 and 2, and caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, they were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Right? And that's how you see Israel right now, man. Very, very dry. You know? They don't have any type of life in them, man. Just in a dead-ass state. You know? Partying, drinking, hanging out all the time. You know? Not caring about the things of the world. We just want the pandemic to end. And that type of mindset is going to lead them to taking the V, all right? The V, like like Elder Apostle Tahar says, was, which is the Maxine, right? Because we can't say certain things about about the V. And then eventually it, it'll, it'll lead to the RFID, you know? And eventually it'll lead to your destruction. And those people that think in the ways of the world, they're going to end up in that position, Looking up at the sky, seeing their destruction coming. And that's why scriptures talk about, uh, and those that look are going to gain blackness. That doesn't mean you're going to be dark skinned, right? That doesn't mean that, that, that you're going to be, you know, uh, turn, turn, turn to Wesley Snipes or turn to uh, the ancient Egyptian, which were actually dark, dark, dark black. You know, they almost actually do look black. Because the so-called Negroes don't even look black, man. They, they're they brown, you know? But those that look up and see their destruction coming, they're going to gain blackness, which is what? Shame face. Fear. Men's hearts failing them for the things that are to come. Heart attacks. Demons are going to jump on you in your most vulnerable moment. You know? All these atrocities, all, all these, these evil things are going to come upon you. And it's going to be the doing of the Most High. Because there shall, because like the scripture says, shall there be evil in the city, and Yahweh hath not done it. So the Most High is going to cause all those things to happen, man. And if you're not ready for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to come, all right, you're going to be caught in that fire. You know, you're going to be caught in that destruction. So it says, verse three, and she, and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord Yahweh, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. Now think back to yourself before you, you, you heard about this truth, right? What were you doing? What were you doing in the world? Were you trying to better yourself? Were you trying to come back to the most high? Were you trying to, you know, to, to, to be a, a righteous man? You may call yourself to be good. Right? There's a bunch of wicked people that call themselves being good. You know? But never righteous. Because righteous is according to the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Oh, I, I, I gave $2 to this homeless woman or to this homeless man. I'm being good. That's my good deed for the day. Right? Or I'm going to let this person have this and that's my good deed for the day. You know? But that doesn't mean you're righteous. You see? So think of yourself before you come into this truth or or, or before you, you came into the knowledge. You know? And and see where this these prophecies, these scriptures broken down by a brother or, or by an elder or by an elder apostle. All right, they were broken down and, and he showed you the way and showed you how this is this, this is that, you're this. They're that. This is what we have to do. This is what they're going to do. And, and this is how it's going to go. 
and everything is just open to you. You know, Elder Apostle Tahar at a uh, GMS uh, doc YouTube, I believe uh, that one's back up. If not, it's it's um, uh, what is the mark of the beast? Uh, number two. But um, in one of the, the videos he just recently made, I believe it was today, might have been last night, um, but I watched it today in the morning. And he went into, you know, the, the genealogies and, and why it's important to know these things and why it's important to know certain things, you know. And right after he his video ended, I guess my YouTube is on auto playlist or auto, you know, whatever, whatever random thing shows up next. It, it'll play that, you know, so it jumped to this uh, this pasture trying to break down Ezekiel uh, 38. You know, which reminded me of Ezekiel 37. And I was like, hey, I, you know, I wonder how what they're saying about Ezekiel 37. I wonder if they're saying that it's those people out there in Israel or or, or what they're saying or what they're making up for this. You know, so I, I typed in uh, Ezekiel 37 um, in, in the search bar. And then there was a bunch of pastors saying, calling themselves, breaking down Ezekiel 37. And they weren't saying anything about it. You know, they were just saying the most high got you. The most high got your back. The most high is going to take care of you. Not going into any type of history or, or any type of knowledge, man. You know, so we have to prophesy upon these bones, which a prophecy. All right. When you go into the word prophecy. It says Naba Naba. Actually, it's Naba or Naba, which is to prophesy. Right under influence influence of divine spirit right the holy spirit you can't break these prophecies down unless you have the holy spirit you know yeah you ask somebody what what is what is the mark of the beast and you have certain edomite christians or certain edomites or certain christians that'll say i believe the mark of the beast is the rfid chip which they would be correct you know but can they break it down because when you break down the scriptures, that's what fortifies your, your faith. That's what roots you in this truth. You know, you grow a root and, and firmly rooted in the truth, you know, but simply just by saying things. Well, I believe Ezekiel 37 is the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. And I have no proof to back that up, but I'm just going to say it. And then I believe that the RFID chip is the mark of the beast. I have no proof. I'm just going to say that. And that's what you have a lot of Israelite camps doing. And that's why you have a lot of people that fall out of those camps. And and they go to Vocab Malone's page and say, yeah, these camps are crazy. And they do certain, you know, certain other things. They go back into the world, you know, because they're not firmly rooted in the truth. You know, so if you're a young brother listening to, to either my videos or the brother's videos in Great Millstone. All right. What you should do is, is get you a Bible. You know, preferably the 1611 King James uh, Version. All right. And then as we're going through it, certain key points that we're going to hit, you write it down in your Bible or you highlight or you write it down in a piece of paper and write down those scriptures. You practice it. You know that that's how we all did it. You know, and that's under the influence of a divine spirit, which is the, the most high Yahweh. Through Yahweh Shai, through the prophet that's speaking. You see? So again, down here it says, under influence of divine spirit to prophesy, right? So a prophecy is something before it happens. You know, is something that 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 happens or, or yeah, a prophecy is something that's stated before it happens. A prophet is somebody that states something before it happens. You see? So going over here, it says uh, to prophesy, speak, you see, by inspiration in prediction or simply discourse, all right, which is not a prediction. A prediction can, can also be untrue. A prophecy, the prophecies that we speak are strictly off the scriptures. You know, if you notice how the prophets were back then to how they are now and how they evolved and how they changed throughout time. You know, you'll see that the prophets before were were just, you know, saying things that was going to happen. Right. They were told by an angel through the spirit and power of Yahweh. And then they would say it, you know, and they would say certain things that may not even make sense to them at that time timeline. 
you know that's why it says thus saith the lord you know we're not gonna come back and, and say thus saith the lord and start going out and, and and you know acting like like those prophets back then but we are going to prophesy according to what already is written right because like scripture says the things that are written aforetime time are written for our learning you know so now that we learned it we no longer have to go out there and, and say new prophecies because there is no more new prophecies everything is already written down in the scriptures right in the book of isaiah you can go into future prophecies about the destruction that's coming to these two-thirds and the salvation that's coming to to the elect you know that's isaiah chapter one you know right off the bat you have joel chapter two that's talking about the destruction by way of missiles which is also in the book of first john uh i believe it was first john chapter 10 if i'm not mistaken i'm you know i have to go back and, and take a look at that you know but it's uh talking about the destruction that that's coming you know you have um Yahweh Shai that was prophesied in, in Psalms chapter 2. We're not going to prophesy now. Yahweh Shai is going to come back and redeem Israel to uh, to Yahweh and he's going to be slain. We're not going to do that anymore. Why? Because it already passed. It happened, right? Certain certain prophecies already happened that we can speak on. We can speak on Yahweh Shai being uh, uh, um, crucified in the Passover after three days or on the fourth day. You know, um, Yahweh Shai came back, all right, came back from the dead. He stayed with us 40 days after that. You know, we can speak on those things. And then after he stayed with us 40 days, then it was the uh, Pentecost, right, which is 50 days after the Passover. So you had the Passover, those four days, and then 40 days that Yahweh Shai stayed with us. So somewhere around seven days after Yahweh Shai left again, went back up to the heavens right by way of a, a of a chariot that took him up roughly about seven days which would make sense because seven is a is a completion number you know was the pentecost and that's when the holy spirit came down like a rushing wind into the apostles in the book of acts you know so we can speak on speak on certain things to to bring out more knowledge you know but to prophesy is to say things before it happens, you know? So what are the prophecies we're speaking on now? Well, there's three major ones, all right? Really, really, there's a couple, but the three major ones is one, the RFID chip being the mark of the beast, you know? Uh, another one would be uh, possibly the Maxine or the V, you know, Maxi, <laughs> you know, those two, and then... Babylon the Great being destroyed by nuclear fire, which is World War III, which is another one that's coming. You know, those three things are going to be in order. The Ma the Maxine, you're going to have the RFID. Um, we're even going to have concentration camps, which is, you know, Jacob's Trouble. That's another one. And then you're going to have World War III at the very, very end, you know. And then after that, you know, the, the, there is another prophecy, which is uh, slavery. For the rest of the nations that have caused israel to be in a low state of mind they are going to go into slavery and that's written in scripture and that's proof you know that's all the proof we need scripture because like i always mention the church of berea all right which is in scripture they didn't prove yahweh shai was the chosen one by by going to the tomb of yahweh shai and, and finding hair and saying oh this is a piece of hair let's let's go back to the lab and prove that this was the man himself, right? What did they do? They searched the scriptures. And they searched the life of Yahweh Shai. Okay, Yahweh Shai did this. That's according to scripture. He said he was going to do that. Yahweh Shai did this. Okay, in scripture it says that his son was going to do that. And this happened and this happened. Okay, yep, that's him. He fits the description to the perfection, right? You go to John the Baptist and it said that uh, Yahweh Shai was going to be slain. John the Baptist was slain. You know, he got his head cut off, but Yahweh Shai had to suffer. He had to suffer for our sakes, you know, and he had holes in his hands, which is in the book of Jeremiah uh, 39 and, and uh, Zechariah uh, uh, 13. You know, so it goes into Yahweh Shai's suffering 
into Yahawashai having holes in his hands that he gained in, in the house of his friends. It says in Zechariah 13, I believe. Or not Zechariah. Uh, yeah, Zechariah 13. You know? That didn't happen to, to John the Baptist. So it happened to Yahawashai. So what did they do? They searched the scriptures, went back, and said, yep, that fits the description. You know? Same thing with us. Waking up from being dry bones. Again, go back to how you were before. And you have to admit to yourself, you are full of life. Right? This life is this truth. And it's something that's not given to everybody. You know? So it says, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. And that's what we're saying now, right? We're not saying go out there and, and start marrying a bunch of women. We're not saying go out there and, and, and buy some, some badass garments, start wearing all cotton, start doing this, start doing... We don't say all that, right? Listen to the word first. That's the first step, man. Listen to the word. And if the word hits you where it's supposed to, you're going to fear Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai because you're going to know it's true. Like Yahweh Shai said in the book of Revelations, my, my sheep hear my voice. You know? Those that follow Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai wherever he goeth is what it says. You know, but Yahweh Shai did state, my sheep hear my voice. And that's true. Because if you're a sheep of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, what are you going to do? You're going to listen to, to the shepherd. Right? So you're going to follow after the shepherd. And if you hear these words, which are words of wisdom, words of truth, you're going to flock to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. You see? So it says, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. You see? So when did that happen? It says, And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am Yahweh. Right, I heard a couple pastors break this one down in particular uh, verse 6 and it says that means the Lord has your back that means whatever happens God has your back and he's going to give you life for your flesh and life for your spirit <laughs> you know being completely off man so let me go and get this video so you brothers can listen alright let me see here moving in the heart of Theodore Herzl. In the early 1900s, God started moving in the heart of Eliezer ben Yehud, ben Yehuda. Eliezer ben Yehuda began to be convicted that they once again needed to speak Hebrew. Because up until this point, they were either speaking Aramaic or Yiddish. Yiddish is just a European Hebrew dialect. So Eliezer ben Yehuda said, in my household, we're going to learn the ancient Hebrew language again, and nobody's going to speak but only Hebrew in my home. Started teaching his son that. Other Jewish families said, we're going to jump on the bandwagon and do the same thing. In their homes, one by one, little by little, God even rebirthed the language in the hearts of people. It was a fulfillment of the prophecy of Zephaniah 3 verse 9. For then... I and that's true. Zephaniah 3 verse 9 is fulfilled. All right. But it didn't happen through these, these people that this man thinks that it happened through. It's happening through us. All right, and it started at the One West School, which they started teaching the Hebrew, the true Hebrew, all right, which they say has no true pronunciation because it's only ah, 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 so, you know, you sound like an idiot. But whenever you break down the true, you know, uh, meaning of it, it's Yashar Allah, Yashar Allah, right? And then we have um, Yahawada. Yahawa, right? There's it's not just Yahawa, you know, like you got a fucking ball stuck in your mouth. We do pronounce things correctly, man. You know, and again, we know in part, we prophesy in part, and that's also in the scriptures. You know, so let me continue playing this. Will restore to the peoples a pure language that they may all call on the name of the Lord. To what is the name of the Lord? Right, and that's the main thing I wanted to get from this. That they may all call on the name of the Lord. What is the name of the Lord? Ask that to IUIC. Ask that to, to all these other camps. And ask them where they got it from. 
right? If they can't say the name of the Lord, oh, the name of the Lord is God, you can call him whatever you want. He's going to look at you regardless. No, he's not, man. He's not. Why? Because it, it, it's like a, like when you go to, to a safe, right? You go to a safe, say there's $2 million behind the safe. You go to the safe and you try to open the safe and it has a, it has a code, right? What, you're just going to put any code in? You can put any code you want to put in and that thing is going to open up for you. No. All right. It's been given. The name has been given to particular individuals. It wasn't given to the whole world. Right. The name wasn't given to the whole world. Yahweh Shai's name wasn't given to the whole world. The ministry, the truth, the doctrine, the prophecies, they weren't given to the whole world, man. That's not prophetic. That's not scriptural for the whole world to have the name. It's not. They don't even have the, the, those Jewish people, all right, even those rabbis in, in Israel that, that people look up to, they don't have the name of the Most High, all right? You see how they call themselves uh, uh, Judah? They call them Yahuda. So the, names, the name of the Most High is Yahoo. And that's why you have that website called Yahoo, yahoo.com. It's praising the Most High. Come on, man. That's a bunch of BS. You know? The Most High's name is not Yahoo. You know? It's not Yahoo. So, that right there, he cut himself. You know? I don't even have to go into the scriptures to cut him. Because he cut himself. Saying that it was a... It's a to, you know, uh, to call on the name of the Lord. That, that's prophecy that they got the Hebrew... Well, what's the name of the Lord? They don't have it. They call him Hashem, which means the name. That's not his name. Serve him with one accord. To serve him with one accord. Now, you have those people over there in Israel right now that are committing all kinds of wickedness, right? They have Pink City, which is, you know, a celebration of, of, of uh, lesbianism, uh, being gay, LGBTQ, whatever the hell. They have that shit over there in Israel, and it's the biggest gay party ever. You know? That's not fulfilling the commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So clearly, that's not fulfilling prophecy. Because whenever Israel goes back into the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of Israel, New Jerusalem, is going to be paved in gold. Alright? The streets are going to be made out of pure gold. Everything is going to be made out of pure gold and, and, and beautiful stones. As scripture says in Tobit 13, it says in the book of Revelations chapter 21. I uh, believe the book of Daniel goes into it, you know, briefly. But the kingdom of heaven is going to be beautiful, right? And it's not going to be up in heaven. It's called the kingdom of heaven because it's going to come down from heaven, which is going to be New Jerusalem, which is going to be the elect and the great multitude. Coming down from the heavens, which they got saved from the destruction that's coming down to Babylon the Great, which is America. You know? To serve him with one accord. You know? That's happening right now, man. You see that at Great Millstone, we, we make videos. We pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, we, we, we uh, uh, go out to the highways and the byways. Study, listen to each other, fortify each other. You know? That's happening right now, serving the Most High with one accord. That's not happening over there in Israel. In the same time, in the early 1900s, Britain became sympathetic and supportive of the Zionist movement. And then, after they, as I mentioned earlier, defeated the Ottoman Empire, kicked the Turks out of this area, British mandates started to take over the territory. 1917, the, the Balfour Declaration allowing for the formation of a Jewish homeland. In 1947, to the chagrin of the Arab League, of the Arab nations, the UN announced a partition resolution allowing the Jews a permanent homeland. And so another Zion... You see that? It happened through way of men. That's not scriptural. It's not scriptural for way of men, all right, to, to cause Israel to come back. We know the Most High works through men. Yes, that's true. We know the Most High controls all these nations. Yes, that's true. But when the Most High says, I will cause you to be put into that land. I will bring you out. I will save you. 
That means what? That means Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai are going to save us, right? That's what Yahweh Shai's name for, stands for. Yahweh, he is, right? He is to be uh, Yashai, which is he 